Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Sax Academy and in today's lesson I'm going to be showing you how to improvise over a 12 bar blues by looking at three sample solos, first for beginners, then intermediates and finally an advanced level. So first of all, to get started, you can get your free PDF and backing tracks that accompany today's lesson. That's all linked down in the description below. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons. And finally, if you enjoy this lesson and you find those resources useful and you'd like to help support this channel, you can also buy me a coffee. The link to that is also down below. So in last week's lesson, we were doing some phrases using the blues scale. Um, the link to that is also down in the description if you'd like to check that video out. And in that, we were doing two two bar phrases on each degree of the scale. And this was over like a one chord groove or a one chord jam. In today's lesson, we're improvising over what's called a 12 bar blues. And this is one of the most standard forms that you can improvise over. And literally thousands of songs have been written over these set of chords. There are lots of variations you can do to a blues chord sequence, but the basic structure remains the same. We start with chord one for four bars. We go to chord four for two bars. We go back to chord one, and then we go chord five, chord four, and chord one. For the beginner version, we're only using the blues scale of the key that this is in. So for alto saxophones, this is a blues in G, so they're using G blues scale. And for tenor saxophones, that's going to be a C blues scale for a blues in C. Okay, so first of all, we'll have a go at the sample solo. And then afterwards, we'll talk about how you can create your own similar solos. So with this style of improvising, we're not so concerned with outlining the chords that we're playing over, but it's more of what we call a horizontal approach, where you're using the overall key blue scale to improvise over the top, and the chords underneath, they're colouring what you're doing, rather than you trying to outline those chords. And this is nice because it leaves you to think more melodically, more horizontally, and really focus on creating some nice melodic lines, rather than worrying about where, where each chord is going and hitting resolution points and chord tones. All of that stuff can come later. So here are some tips when you're using that blue scale to help create your own improvised solos. So the first thing you can do is really get to know this scale by playing it from different starting notes. So for example, you could go from the second note up an octave and back down again, and then from the third note up an octave and back down again. And by doing that, it frees you up from always starting on the first note of the scale. Secondly, in the beginning, I would always aim to do two bar phrases, and that helps you keep track of where you are in the form, and it gives a sense of proportion to your phrasing as well. Last week's blue scale workout video was 36 two bar phrases. So if you work your way through those, you'll get a really clear sense of how long two bars lasts. So that when you then go to improvise, you should be able to feel when you've done a two bar phrase. Another great way to make your solo sound melodic is to move mostly in stepwise motion. Of course, you can jump up high or do a big jump down low every now and then, but it's best to move in a stepwise motion because it sounds more singable and more melodic. And then finally, you can start to play around with the resolution of your phrases. Um, if you think of the first note of the scale, so for example, G on altos when we're using the G blues scale, that's like your home note. So if you finish your phrase on a G, it's definitely gonna feel like it's finished. And you can play around with sometimes finishing on a G so it feels like it's come to an end, or sometimes leaving it hanging by say, finishing on an F or a B flat. The next up we have the intermediate version. In this one, we're starting to mix up the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic scale. So G major and G minor pentatonic for altos and C major and C minor pentatonic for tenors. First of all, we can have a go at going through the sample solo Thank you. 
So for this intermediate version, we're now playing around with two different scales. We've got the lighter, brighter, major pentatonic scale, and then obviously that blue scale. There are no real hard and fast rules with how you mix these, but there is one thing. You don't generally want to use the major pentatonic when you're on the four chord. So that's bar five and six. Um, that's because the major third in the major pentatonic clashes with the seven of the four chord. But as in the beginner version, you can do the other way around where you can use your blues scale over any of the chords. So in general, it's nice to use that major pentatonic when you're on the one chord, and then you can mix in the blues scale to add in a darker sound whenever you want, really. In this version of the 12 bar blues as well, instead of having a 5-4-1 at the end, we have a 2-5-1. Now I really like the sound of the blue scale when you hit that 5 chord, because it takes some really interesting extensions like the sharp 9 and the flat 13 of the dominant 7th chord underneath. Don't worry if you don't really understand too much what that means, but you can experiment with that sound. Just try using the blue scale when you hit that 5 chord to hear the effect it has. As ever, all the other previous tips about using 2 bar phrases, having a strong rhythm, moving around in a stepwise motion, all those ideas apply here as well. It's just we've got this extra degree of freedom where we're now playing around with that major pentatonic on the 1 chord. Okay, so next up we have the advanced version. Now in this version, we are doing a full, what's called a jazz blues. With this level of improvising, the best thing you can do is transcribe your favorite players and see what they do over the blues scale. In this solo, we've got lots of really common pieces of jazz language. So the best thing you can do is have a look at what I'm playing over the chord and then take that little piece and try putting it into your own solos as well. Okay, so here's that advanced version. Okay, that's it for this week guys. If you've enjoyed the lesson, remember you can support the channel by buying me a coffee down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week.